since the pandemic, my wife and I have acquired a lot of random fitness stuff. Like dumbbells that are too small to fit on a regular dumbbell rack. I also have this set of power blocks that are adjusted from the side, and they won't fit on a regular dumbbell rack either. So that's why I'm making this custom concrete shelf weight rack thing. Although it's going to look like concrete, the frame is actually going to be made of wood. If I were to make it from solid concrete, it would weigh close to 300 pounds. So it's going to be wood with a skim coat of concrete, and no one will know the difference, except for all of you watching this video. This is half inch builder grade plywood, and here I've doubled up the front and back faces of the frame, so I only have to make one set of cuts, and hopefully they'll both match. Now I'm marking off two and a half inches all the way around the frame that will ultimately hold the concrete and drilling some pilot holes so I can use my jigsaw to cut everything out. Now I'm ripping some 2x4 scraps I had down into 2x2s, and then I'll cut them to length so that they can reinforce the frame from the inside. I want to take out any kind of flex from this piece of furniture so that when I set a heavy weight down on it, it doesn't crack the concrete. Here I'm hucking a slot out of each post so I can run my middle shelf through it. I'm doing three posts at a time, and that's going to help me with alignment. This particular table saw doesn't work very well with a sled, so I just use a miter gauge and the fence on the other side as a stop. I clean everything up with a chisel. And then I cut my shelf supports to length. Once I've got everything laid out and dry fit, I can use a half inch piece of plywood scrap as a spacer for either side because ultimately all these posts are going to be enclosed by plywood and then coated with concrete. So now you're seeing the face of the structure and the posts that are going to reinforce it from the inside. Maybe a bit of over engineering here but again I just don't want any flex once this thing is complete. Once I'm done with one side, rinse and repeat with the other. Now for the sides, I use some leftover pieces of plywood cut down to 16 inches deep by 24 inches tall. And then it's time for assembly. Once I have everything clamped in place with some right angle jigs, I can secure it with wood screws until it's solid as a rock. Now to make sure this thing has a solid concrete look when it's finished, I'm covering the insides with scraps that were left over from when I cut out the frame. Here I'm notching the pieces that are going to go around that middle shelf. These are the shelf supports that are going to take all the weight of the bottom shelf so that it doesn't sit directly on the concrete. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Last but not least, the shelf supports for the top of the unit, and these are going to end up taking most of the weight. And if I'm being honest, I cut these things about five times off camera to get them to fit right.
this is a resurfacing compound as opposed to just a, a pure concrete. And that means it can be applied in coats of down to as thin as an eighth of an inch. Now this part of the project was really difficult to get a nice even coat of concrete on a two and a half inch wide surface. Typically it's meant to be applied to much larger spaces than that. And that's why I started with what I considered to be the back of the piece. The ends were much easier just because I had more space to work with. I just kind of, well, let me turn it around so you can see. I'm just basically troweling it around until it's nice and even. And here you can see it's starting to get a little bit of that waterfall look. I basically applied the concrete over two or three days. I would do two or three panels and then rotate the piece and then do two or three more before I finally finished with the front face. Now these edges were especially tricky, getting them to look seamless. It just took a lot of patience, a lot of extra trial work, and uh, just a lot of general touching up. Now this is my first time making a piece of furniture out of concrete. I've done a lot of tile work and things like that in the past, but never anything where the concrete was the star of the show. So you could say it was putting my trial work on trial. Sorry, I couldn't resist. And because we're going for that solid concrete look and basically covering every vertical surface in concrete, that actually meant eight sides that we had to cover and pretty much an entire bag of the resurfacing compound. So although it wasn't 300 pounds, it was still pretty heavy. Now for the front of this thing, I wanted nice clean edges and I didn't want to slop anything on all the work I had just done. So I made a form using scraps of plywood and anything else I had laying around. Um, and off camera I cut all this stuff to the exact lengths and then I mixed in some mineral oil and just applied it to the sides of the form to keep the concrete from sticking to the sides which I was going to remove once all the concrete was applied. And then I took this plastic scraper and I cut it down to two and a half inches so it would fit just right inside the form I had just made. And although it took a lot more setup, these two changes made applying the concrete to the surface of this thing a lot smoother. Let's have a look at it. Whoop. Oh, well, it looks pretty good. How about this one? Yeah, not too bad. And these guys, with a little touch up, I think it'll blend in real nice. This is where I have to channel my inner sculptor and get these things to look like they're one solid piece of concrete. These holes will be for the adjustable feet I'll put on this thing because even if my carpentry is precise, my floors are not. metal casters on will help it slide around on the floor because it's still probably 65 or 70 pounds and it's going to have weights on it on top of that so if I ever want to move it without throwing out my back I'll need a little assistance from these guys. Now to build out the center shelf I'm basically putting a nailer on the bottom half and then my shelf will float on the top half and to secure it in place I'm using a little bit of glue and a bunch of brads and this will give it a nice clean look where you won't actually see any of the attachment hardware. And these are just some one by sixes. You can see the first two fit in nice and cleanly and then I just have to take a little bit of width out of the last one. And then I repeat the process on the other side. Now 
for the bottom and the top shelves. Once I have all the pieces cut, they fit real nice. Now for the top, I want to have an elevated section for those power blocks so that they can be adjusted from the side without bumping any of the stuff that's sitting next to them. So I'm building out this box and I'm going to secure the pieces that are beside it and then I'll secure the box itself to those pieces. I've got some glue and I'll add a few brads in each corner and then I'll try to find some wood that will fit the top just right. And this is a little bit of trial and error. I've got three pieces left and they don't fit perfectly so one of them is going to have to get cut down and they should really all be run through the joiner so those edges are nice and square. And there we go. We'll just secure this bad boy in place and we are done. All right, let's keep it classy. So here we have it. I've got plenty of room for stuff across the bottom two shelves. And across the top, I've got plenty of room for dumbbells of all sizes, even those little ones. And because of that box I built, I can adjust the weight on the power blocks without hitting dumbbells on either side. And if you didn't know any better, you would think this thing was solid concrete with wooden shelves. The bottom shelf can hold at least two sets of weights on either side. And the floating shelf can hold all the pretty stuff. It came out pretty consistent despite two different methods of applying the concrete. And what you didn't see was I gave it a good sanding to make all those edges nice and seamless. So thanks for watching. Now I should probably go lift some of these things. Eh, maybe later. <laughs>